What's up? Welcome back. Today it is Monday again, and we have another beautifully crafted market update for you. Everything you need to know for the week ahead. On top of that, we sit just 22 subscribers away. This officially will be the stream where we hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Huge fam. Couldn't have done it without all of you. Please, please join in the celebration by smashing the like, putting something nice in the chat, and uh, grabbing a brew, rolling up, because we got some stuff to talk about. Right on. Let's start with uh, Bitcoin, basically ranging at all-time highs. We've seen a move above 70,000, and now we're basically just back below it in an indecision-ish area on the chart. Um, lots of people are wondering, is the bull market over? The short answer, I think it's highly unlikely. Everything is possible, but I think the odds of that are incredibly low. Uh, but let's talk about what's next. Bitcoin at this point has never stopped climbing, meaning once it's hit a new all-time high, it has never stopped climbing. Uh, in 2021, we had a slightly higher high at 69K, but that was after a parabolic rise and a little bit different scenario. Here we are coming off our bear market bottom in 2023, and this is different. The halving is uh, just a month away, a month and eight days, 420. Mark it on your calendars. It's going to be a great day to celebrate. Um, and with uh, our ETF, all 10 ETFs, we have momentum we've never seen before. So I think it would be kind of a strange call to deviate from the past and say, okay, well, this isn't going to keep going up. It doesn't mean we can't have pullbacks. Every bull market has been marked with pullbacks, so we have not really seen them yet. They may be in store, but in my opinion, it is all but locked in that we are entering the official crypto bull market. As we noted last week, we always look for confirmation on the monthly, and that's why we have this monthly chart pulled up in front of us. Let me see. Yeah, you're, you got it. Good view, good view. Uh, basically, we need to secure our monthly close. So it is March. We're about halfway through, and we need to see a close above the previous all-time high, basically 69,000. Until, uh, until this month is over, it's a little too early to count our uh, victories. March will also wrap up Q1 of this year, and that's going to make for a pretty interesting candle. And so with about uh, 18 days to go, all eyes set on that 69K mark. In earlier cycles, so back in, let's say, 2020, on our approach to 20K, it took about two months to break the all-time high. So to sit here through March and maybe even through April wouldn't be that different than what we've seen. That wouldn't be scary. Uh, in fact, that would really just line up with what we've seen in the previous cycles. The reason we look to the monthly is we can see price movements that can be very volatile on lower time frames, like say hourly, maybe even daily candles. Um, <clears throat> they're more vulnerable to speculation, obviously volatility and low time frame influences. So that is why we look to the monthly or these big closes. I'll say even in the quarterly here. So if you're still confident that Bitcoin is going higher like I am, this is an excellent opportunity to continue adding your positions to DCA. Uh, can't say that I would recommend going all in on leverage here at an all-time high, but spot positions are much lower risk and it's still a good time to continue accumulating. Whether we have a few months at this range or even lower prices, DCA is the solid bet strategy. That is the way I think you should go. That's the way I, would, I have gone. Uh, basically, if you are a low-risk spot holder, as we talked about last week as well, you may start to look for prices that you want to DCA out of or take some profit. Remember, you haven't made a penny until you sell. It can get very, we can get very easily swept away with what our portfolio says. And uh, to lock in, not all in, not all out, not sell it all here or something, but to start thinking about a plan where you're taking profit is probably a good idea. I think that's the best advice I can give you guys today. Uh, you can also look to rotate into maybe higher gaining things, lower market cap. But again, right now, consider the capital gains or the tax implications of doing so. Trading out of Bitcoin or whatever uh, is basically trading out at a very high point. And if you're using that to, say, trade BTC Soul, 
you're going to have a cost basis very high and you're going to have a lot of uh, tax burden come next year. <clears throat> it is pretty likely that we oscillate here, I'll say, for the next bit. I would love to see it, see it not happen. No one knows the future. But uh, even in the worst case scenario, basically looking for some kind of cheaper prices, it doesn't seem to be coming, but it is what we've seen in the past. Let's look at uh, the old dominance. We looked at this last Monday as well in our market wrap up, our market update, pretty much exactly where we were, trending below this eight year resistance, uh, testing our 2024 resistance here multiple times on the uh, weekly time frame. I think this is what the screenshot is. Dominance is another way of saying Bitcoin market share or what it represents versus the total crypto space. So if it says if dominance is at 50, that means Bitcoin represents half of the total crypto market cap. Uh, on lower time frames, you could use Bitcoin dominance to gauge altcoin season or rallies. Uh, but I think it's actually better done on bigger time frames and with bigger macro moves. Bitcoin is at the higher ish range of dominance, at least where I expected it to go, 60%-ish, kind of what I was looking for. Uh, and that does imply that all still just might be on sale. When dominance drops or returns to the lows of say 2021, 22, alts then will have their alt season or at least on the way down. So if you think these gains are mind blowing, buckle up because there is so much more, so much more in crypto to come. Um, <clears throat> altcoin rallies typically fall local or major tops on Bitcoin. We are seeing price slow down here at the all-time high. So we may see some weakness in dominance and that may make your portfolio sing if you're burdened up on those altcoins. Good for you. I have a lot of them too, but hopefully you guys are making some real gains. Uh, <clears throat> meme coins continue to run hot over the last few weeks. And man, is that something. That is something. Uh, with the rise of these meme coins, we have seen downward pressure on dominance, and that does explain maybe its sideways trend. However, just looking at these candles, we continuously are testing our high range for this year. And what happens when we test resistance? It's weakened on each attempt, and each attempt after has a higher probability of breaking through. So it would not be crazy if we start to see altcoins maybe chill out for a little bit or Bitcoin make move to the upside to have this resistance broken. We can do this long term cycle forecast here using basically a parabolic curve. You guys know how I feel about these, but what else are we going to use? Um, basically, lots of analysts are looking for about 120K range. I think that that's a little low for this bull run. I understand their reasoning. They're looking back at the previous cycles, they're seeing diminishing returns. And so they're applying that math to this cycle and getting about that number. I think that's the logical mathematical thing to do. However, this line of thinking has got me caught live streamed all throughout the last uh, three years that got me caught up looking at the past and expecting it to repeat or even really look the same did not turn out well this cycle or in the last cycle we can call it now um, 65k all time high with a slightly higher high in the next year or at the end of the year for 69k. That was nothing we've ever seen. Just looking at this briefly, you can see every previous cycle high has been kind of one event, a blow off top and then bleeding. We didn't really get that. This cycle has broken a lot of what analysts expect and what they, I wanna say expected from a cycle. And to me, that is evidence combined with the macro influences that we have during this one that things probably aren't going to line up really like we expect them to. Uh, I don't think that the past is going to rhyme very much. My target going to be much higher. Of course, I'm always a bull for everyone tuning in for the first time or listening to this for the first time. I'm always bullish. I'm looking for like 300K. I can show you the reasoning for that later in the episode. So get a little on-chain data. Given that we're approaching price exploration in this new cycle, I think we should all begin to evaluate different types of data and that being on-chain data, one that I have not really spent that much attention to over the last few years. But this one, this specific piece of data, I really like. And that's Bitcoin on exchanges. Just to update you guys quickly from last week, Bitcoin on exchanges continues to dwindle 
And as that supply dwindles, there is less potential selling pressure at any given time. And this does allow the market to look for more moves or continuation to the upside as it doesn't have that barrier by the Bitcoin on exchanges. There we go. Nice, nice. Popping. We're popping here. Good, good. Hoping there was no problems with the stream. Looks good to me. Perfect. Shwiggity sweet. <sighs> Basically, more Bitcoin is being bought and held than it is being sent to exchanges or being mined. And that is largely due to ETFs gobbling up supply. We have, I believe, El Salvador recently revealed they had a lot more Bitcoin than they originally claimed and that they will continue to buy Bitcoin every single day. And that is awesome. We have so many forces like Michael Saylor. Um, there was some talk about Tesla moving or adding to their Bitcoin supply, but I'm not sure. I don't have the facts on that, so I'm not going to spread that. Basically, towards the end of the cycle or towards a bull run peak, we would expect to see balance on exchanges rise again as it has with every cycle peak as people look to take profit. And that's going to be an early warning sign for when maybe some profit taking should be taken or when the top might be getting close. But that metric is going to be a hard one to judge. It's going to be more about the longer term trend of Bitcoin supply to exchanges than it will be any given price point or any given amount on exchanges. It's a little complicated. Uh, to do, let's see. Net unrealized profit and loss, a great metric. Great metric that is really good at showing us in a very simple manner, is the market bullish or is the market bearish? Um, I got lost. It can also be called NUPL. We looked at this last week as well, and it's the total amount of profit and loss in Bitcoin wallets represented as a ratio. Uh, it's currently trending in the greedy range of belief or bullish, I guess we could call it, where traders are mostly in profit, but holding and expecting more upside. And if you look at this chart really briefly, very zoomed out, you can get a good idea, actually. Uh, when this turns red, we typically see a bearish market trend or the bear market. And after it moves back into the green and begins trending like it did at the start of 2023, things can get very bullish very quickly. I want to uh, stop really quick here and say, guys, we are 19, just 19 people can subscribe to this channel before we hit 100K. We're never going back. You'll never get an opportunity to do this again. So join the OG club. Smash that button. Hit that like button. Share it out. Um, <clears throat> we can do it, fam. We're going to do it by the end of the stream. I'm not leaving. We're not ending this stream until we hit 100K. There it is. There it is. We got a few more. Nice. I'll shout you all out after this. After we're done. Uh, miner. Let's look at miner position index. This is another nice little data point, and it shows the net result of a day's inflows moving Bitcoin to exchange into outflows, Bitcoin moving off exchange from miners. And the implication is that when Bitcoin... Oh, man, did I... I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Sorry, miner position index. I'm getting ahead of myself in the notes. Uh, miner selling pressure. This is what it's showing us, and we can see it has been down relative to the start of 2024 that is showing a calmer or less aggressive downside pressure for the bitcoin market and that's reflected by what miners are doing with their newly mined coins as we approach the halving i would expect this to mix up typically miners do look to take profit to upgrade their rigs so that they continue to be profitable post halving etc there we go here we go. This is the inflows and outflows. This is showing us the results of the day's inflows and outflows from exchanges. And uh, basically the implication is when Bitcoin is moved off exchange, it is not available for sale. And when it's moved to exchange, we have more downside pressure. Kind of reiterating what we said a minute ago, but uh, it's great to just look at this in a different way. On this chart, we can see that outflows have been bullish. They have been trending or biased to the outflow instead of the inflow. And that's what we would expect when markets are bullish or in bullish condition. And as we approach the end of the bull market, whenever that might be, we would expect this to flip and we would see inflows outnumber outflows as people are looking to cash in on their positions. Man. Got a lot of notes. Pi cycle indicator update again, looking just like, where was it? The start of the previous bull run. 
pretty spicy stuff. I've been a skeptic of the Pi cycle indicator, but I kind of like what it's showing us now. Uh, back here is the equivalent of where we are today in the cycle and in price. And what's really cool is if you zoom in, you can see, there it is. You can see we are directly below this green band. Those bands did not touch or cross until roughly the top of the bull market. When it, I guess, I guess it pointed out the top of the bull market, the peak. Uh, here we are, almost the exact same condition. We're right underneath the green trend line. That might have changed since last time we looked at it. But either way, Pi Cycle is basically in agreement that we are somewhere in the cycle close to December 2020. Very exciting stuff. Very exciting. MRV. Let's talk about MRV quick. Uh, MRV's cooled off a little bit in the last week. We saw a small rejection along the... Oh, this is too zoomed in. Uh, along the 2.8, a minor resistance. MRV being market cap to its realized market cap. And it's used to understand when exchanges trade below what is considered a fair value of price. And by looking at this ratio between market cap and realized cap, uh, we can see this in a graph form. And this gives us an idea of whether the market thinks it's being priced fairly and can be used to identify potential tops and bottoms. You'll see that the fair valuation tends to tap a low point or a cycle bottom point uh, where that ratio dips under one and that we have seen that in the last three bear markets and they have marked the bottom. We are moving back up. We have seen lower highs on this fair value indicator. Basically, as time goes on, speculation continues, but it does get a little calm down. We may break that this cycle. We have been did talk about that earlier. We might see something new here, but uh, as this moves up, it will definitely be an interesting piece of information to watch as we approach that trend line and see what price is at at that point. My guess is as good as yours. I have no idea. Dollar index. This is the Dixie chart on the monthly and it is a measure of the US dollar, which is a basket, a weighted basket of goods of the other five major currencies in the world. And it is an indicator of the strength of the dollar. And typically when it is up, we see equities and stocks and commodities drop in price. And when the dollar moves down, we tend to see the opposite. Uh, big, nice moves to the upside or bullishness. Uh, of particular importance, I would say, is about this 101 or 100 level. Uh, it's arguably the most important in my on the chart. Almost every time in the past 50 years when we've rejected from it or closed under the 101 range, it has led to a prolonged period of the dollar weakening. You can see that back here in 2017, 18, back here again in 2003. And potentially, we could see that coming up in this year as the dollar does seem to be struggling to find bids, kind of stuck in this range moving sideways. We do have the FOMC on Wednesday, March 20th, a chirp how. That stream's already scheduled. Make sure you enable notifications for that and tune in 1 p.m. East Wednesday. But the Fed will drop, uh, basically markets are predicting that the Fed will drop their rates. They had at one point expected five interest rate cuts in this year, and I think that number is quickly shrinking down. I think the last time I looked, it was at like three, maybe. People were looking for interest rate cuts as early as March, and I'm going to tell you, the odds of that happening are incredibly low. We've gotten some hot CPI data lately. Job, uh, job numbers, unemployment numbers are not where the Fed wants them, and inflation is clearly not under control yet. I think that's the biggest takeaway, the easiest way to understand that. We'll have a lot more intro and information on that on Wednesday, but make sure you tune in. Uh, typically when they do cut rates, we see markets reverse. We see the tops of markets in. So I'm down with them. Maybe just do it next year. We don't need interest rate cuts this year. Market sentiment, economic events, political discourse, and general price action are all events that can impact sentiment. The market, and this means the greater market, not just crypto, is overwhelm overwhelmingly bullish and it has been since October of 2023. This is a reflection of increasingly positive sentiment around markets and various factors can affect this and it in turn lead to sell-offs. Uh, going into an election cycle, we can expect some volatility to accompany the crypto narrative 
with players like Senator Ward, Warden, Warren building an anti-crypto coalition. It remains to be seen if this will have a bigger impact on sentiment uh, than the increasing accommodate, increasingly accommodating macro. I don't think it's really going to matter. I, I think at this point, Bitcoin's at all-time high, and uh, it's going to take a lot to change that. Sentiment can turn quickly, but I don't think that Senator Warren is going to have any kind of impact. Some other kind of sentiment data that we've been watching, Google Trends for crypto and Bitcoin terms, uh, they are on the rise. Historically, when Coinbase uh, specifically as a search term rises to the top of the app charts, we have seen major tops approaching. Uh, however, I believe it dropped nearly 70 ranks recently, maybe since the last one, uh, to number 219 and only 14 among finance apps. So that is down. That is definitely down. Uh, this week, we did see Bitcoin cooling off on Google Trends after the breakout to the third highest level in three years. This doesn't look like a top yet. This looks like the top. This looks like the march up. And uh, that's exactly where we want it to be. All right, last thing. I hate, I love doing these, but mm, I like to just ad lib more. But if I don't stay on some script, then I don't get all the ideas out. Crypto and economic calendar coming up. Sunday already happened. Tuesday, we have core CPI and CPI. Big numbers that are going to influence 100% what is said on Wednesday. Chirpow. Oh, this is the wrong one. I pulled up the wrong one. Yep. Oh, well, that is uh, as good as any stopping point then, isn't it? Oh, and while we were talking, there it is, fam. There it is. Watch your speakers. Ultra K. Yeah, boys. We did it. We did it. We did it. Ah, it's been five years, fam. We did it. We mother trucking did it. It's almost too good to be true. The only thing that's not too good to be true, I guess. Whew. We did it. It feels good. It feels very good. Oh my. Oh my. Does it feel good? Do you feel good? You should. I do. Uh, let's see. What should we do to celebrate? I should give away some memberships. I should give away a little bit of them memberships. What do you think? Oh man. I knew if I just kept my head down just got through that intro that it would happen i wouldn't have to stress about it someone clipped that someone clipped the 100k mark oh man what a day what a trucking day let's go boys bitcoin not doing much solana made some moves we'll take a look at that we just got through the intro-ish part of the uh the episode shout out to everybody watching we finally did it we finally did it we hit 100k i could cry Oh my goodness, I could cry. Love you guys. Love you guys. Couldn't have done this without every single one of you out there supporting us every day. Just being the best. Oh man. Five years in the making. Finally did it. Holy moly. Oh my goodness. Whew. Give me a sec. Give me a sec here. Do want to uh, shout out our sponsor, Lux Algo, the number one crypto indicator and scanner. Scanners. Company in the world. They make bang and stuff. They have hundreds of free indicators. Check them out. Uh, make sure you're in the Discord, discord.gg slash Tom Crown. Mm. Mm. Where'd even go from here? The only way to go is up. That's it. Ah, boys, 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 boys. Let's look at Bitcoin really quick and then I want to jump in the chat. No, 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 let's jump in the chat. Let's pop the chat out. We did it. We did it. Ah, good times, good times. Brings a tear to my eye. First super chat, Kai. The wonderful, beautiful Kai. Ooh, she's the best. Appreciate you, darling. Appreciate you. Congrats on 100,001 subs.
that extra sub just to make sure you didn't drop back below. Rolling on the floor laughing. Appreciate you. Oh, man. Whew, what a day. Chris Pax, there it is, buddy. You're next, my friend. You're next. Extra sub. I appreciate it, dude. Uh, so many people during this live already subscribed. Darius Stepney, thank you. Oscar Bahar Baharathi, thank you. Ultra Chaos Steve, congrats on the 100K, Tom. You've been here with me the whole time, brother. I appreciate you. Obe, Zbit, Pigskin, Sam Dunn, Jimmy O'Grady, Shark Boy VR. I wonder who actually the exact 100,000 subscriber was. I was, I was, it was in the zone. Derek Merrill, what's up over there on uh, Facebook with Tom Boat? Appreciate you guys. ID super chatted. Asked if we can look at Doge. We can look at Doge. You got trade from uh, thirteen two. That's like right in the range we were looking for before, if my memory is correct. Solan Martinez subscribed. Johnny, KZ Zona, Max Net Boxel. We got a lot. I appreciate every single one of you making it count today. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So good. It is so, so good. Oh, man. We got people on both streams. I like it. Which one is the messages going to, though? There we go. I got to change that subscriber button. Right on. A uh, reminder, in the video description below, sign up with any of our partners and get VIP access in the Discord for free. It's great. Check it out. Can I look at ENJ? Man, guys, we just got 100K. You think we got to look at ENJ? We got to look at... Now this plan. We'll look at a bunch of stuff. Crazy one minute dodge bounce. All right, all right. We'll look at dodge. What's up, Crypto uh, Cut Capone? Crypto Capone, 360 baboon. What up, dude? What up? Do I think it's possible Bitcoin could go under 50k? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. I think uh, to expect that right now is jumping the gun a lot. Like to expect it before we go higher. I think it's jumping the gun, but. uh yeah, we'll take a look at the Bitcoin chart and I'll tell you what I'm looking for for that. But I want to start in a low time frame. We usually go from high time frame to low and that is the smarter way to go about it. That is. But uh, let's do this. I whipped this up earlier. This is basically what I'm looking for on low time frames today. We potentially have a pretty looking inverse head and shoulders uh, right here. Started, let's see, in the 15th of March. Left shoulder, very clear defined head going on left shoulder or right shoulder painting right now so yeah it could go up or down <laughs> i know uh basically if this pattern plays out we would expect i'd say to hold like 66k you could touch it but you don't want to see it move below the left shoulder and of course under the head giggity of the inverse head and shoulders that pattern is broken so this is what i'm hoping to see today a move up to like 71.3 a pullback to our neckline it looks like 69.5 and then a move higher and i believe if we get this set up we are looking for a retest of the all-time high and let's be realistic probably higher however what i'm watching more closely than that is this price down here this 64.5 breaking this low time frame pattern is not the end of the world it's not doomy gloomy bear market time but for those of you saying, is 50K possible? Is 30K? Is 40K? Is whatever, whatever number. We're going to look for these things first. We're going to look for a low time frame break. Then we're going to look at our higher time frames and say, where's the logical place that price YouTube is going to go if it breaks BTC to the downside? King of 100K subs, Got first a new of sub. his name, Crown Daddy, Crown Protector of the Crypto Realm. Let's go. Josh, my guy. My guy. You've been here with me, Josh. I've been holding you every step of the way. Appreciate you. I appreciate you all, man. You're all just the best. Like, I know you probably hear me say I couldn't, done, I couldn't have done this without all of you, but like, I mean, it. ain't no way, ain't no way I could have done this without every person in this community. You're all freaking great. I'm going to throw some memberships out. Let's go. Uh, let me get through this. I do appreciate the super chats. You can keep them coming, but let me, let me get through this. So low time frame. This is what I'm looking at. Very simple TA, very simple pattern. If you want to look at it this way, we can say it could be done in the form of a long position, basically like this maybe. This isn't a trade I would take, but this is showing you hopefully what I'm talking about. A move below the head of an inverse head and shoulders invalidates the pattern, so you'd be looking for further downside. As long as that holds, looking for a retest of the high. Easy peasy. I'm going to delete the... Eh, not going to delete it. I'm just going to put it in here. 
uh, as it's not really a trade, it's just the concept. So if this pattern breaks on a low time frame, we're gonna look for, well, where would we, where's the next point down that we might look for a bounce? On the day, that price is very apparent, 65,250. Now that would be maybe the worst possible outcome of this. It would be almost like a fake break of the inverse head and shoulders and then back to your daily highs certainly on the table but we're looking for lower targets uh return to your high being 73 one below us on the day we have another unfilled fair value gap or whatever you want to call it 63.8 k uh logical target we saw actually a pretty efficient move to the upside but we did leave this relatively untapped our green uh candle body here not tapped by a wick yet this has been very common price action I'd say over the last year or so as Bitcoin kind of fills in these dailies. So that's uh, the logic here is really the same logic right there. I'm going to use my fib tool because when in doubt, fib it out. Looking at our local retracement here from the swing low at just under 60K early March to uh, 73.5, 73.8, we are at the 618. So to not break this, would be something I actually I would expect in a bullish uptrend. Uh, you made a move to the upside and now you've retraced to the golden Fibonacci retracement level or the 618. And that is very typical of continuation moves. I'd be keeping my eye out for that. Breaking 63.8 is when we start getting into the, can Bitcoin go to these numbers? Can it go to this? Can it go to that? I am not going to look for downside targets honestly, until 63.8 breaks right here. And that's not far from price. Currently at 67.9 or 68K, that's not even a 10% move to the downside. That is a very tight invalidation. Um, right about here, yeah. 63.8, then I'll start looking for the deeper downside. So where would those be? And now I'm, I'm stringing you along a little bit, but I promise I'm not trying. On the weekly, 63.1. Wait, do we just have that? Do we just have 63.1? Nah. 63.1 would be the weekly eh, last two weeks ago. Not as important as it was last week. That's one of the price points we were looking for last week. One of the price points. Here it is. I could just bring up the TA from the stream on Friday where we did this, but eh, we got new fam. We got new eyes. Hopefully you guys are enjoying what you're seeing. It's a big day for our stream. Something I'm noticing here is that Fib extension or that Fibonacci retracement tool that we placed on our break of our wick low from March. It does point right back to the first order block on the week below us, sitting at 51 to 52K. So if you're thinking, oh, I think Bitcoin's going to 50, there you go. That is actually more than just uh, a price point, more than just a logical level. We even have some confluence here. If 59.2 breaks, our FIB tool tells us to look to the 1618, and that is sitting directly at that weekly order block of what was resistance, untested as support. And so to see a you know, signaled by 63.8 breaking, we would start looking down to those 50K numbers. I can tell you this, I have no idea if it's going to go to 51, 52K. Literally no one does. People will pretend they do, but nobody does. But what I can tell you is that if it does happen, it's really not a big deal. Let's see what the retracement from the high would be. I doubt it's outside of anything we typically see anyway in the bull market. Let's pull it down. 30%. That's roughly in line with, I believe, what our pullbacks last cycle. 30%. We haven't seen one like it yet. In fact, the only real retracement we've seen is right after the ETF. It was a 21% drop. That was a pretty big one. That fits in line pretty well with what we've seen in previous cycles. To see a 29% drop, definitely not out of the realm of possibility. In fact, very much in the realm of what we would expect in a bull market. But the caution here is that that doesn't mean that it has to do it here. It doesn't have to retrace 30% from 73. It can obviously move higher and then do that same retracement. This is the gamble or the kind of the danger of bull runs is you sit there and wait for a position and you say, oh man, I got the perfect price point. It's you know, looking for this. And then it just keeps running. 
your idea was right. Oh, you're going to get a 20, 30% retracement, but it ends up happening higher. It doesn't come back to your point. It doesn't come back to where you're looking. This is a great spot, I think, for people who are expecting further downside. At this point, like I said, I am not. Until uh, 63A breaks, I'm not looking for further downside. I think that that's jumping the gun. But if it happens right here, great price point. You have confluence with your FIB extension, your weekly order block here. And really, just on the day, you can see this efficiency on the chart. Price traded sideways. There was a good bit of skepticism. Uh, battling it out with that resistance. And so a 20, 30% drop to come back to it, that'd be a clean move from a technical point. Be very clean. But can it go lower? Will it go lower, Tom? Will it go back to a price so low that the people asking me wouldn't buy back themselves? <laughs> that happens so commonly. That's funny. Um, it really is. People are like, I want this price. And then sometimes they get it. And then when it comes, they're like, no, 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 it's too risky. And it's like, but you've been waiting for that price, man. What, what do you mean it's too risky? <laughs> same stuff. This, the cycles are really just the same stuff on repeat. Looking at a bigger retracement from September of last year's low to our high this year. Back to the 618. Not a bad spot to look either. 37, 8, just under 40K absolutely could happen this would be a rather large retracement maybe larger than we would expect let's take a peek 48 eh. percent i'm not convinced we'll get a 50 percent retracement in this cycle until it's over but we have seen them in the past we have that could be 37 8 not a bad target the rest, I think, is easy to just see visually. About 30.5K. I don't think... All right, I'll upgrade. Because it's our 100K stream, I'll upgrade my prediction. Uh, I'm going to say like five or six months ago, I said, I don't think Bitcoin will ever trade below 19.5 thousand. It was more ballsy then. Now it's not as ballsy. I will upgrade that for this stream, for our 100,000 and uh, 58 subscribers now. I'll upgrade that to, I don't think Bitcoin ever trades below 30.5 thousand. I might be jumping the gun myself here. I don't think it's going to come. This price action reminds me a lot of another time when I got uh, a little bit burnt by looking at history. In the last cycle, right here, 30 or 13, geez, 13.8K. Resistance, it was our like bear market rally resistance. We broke through it. And I remember on the way up going, okay, well, if you didn't get in, it was below 20K at the time. 13.8 is just the perfect untested level to come back to. I kind of think that 13.8 is the now today's cycle equivalent at 30.4. Upgraded it. I've been wrong in the past. I'll be wrong again in the future, but uh, that's my honest opinion. Let's see how it plays out for him, Cotton. Right on. There's your bear targets, man. That's it. That's kind of it. If I'm wrong and it trades below 30.4, you could probably say 23.3, but again, I think that these are out of reach. This cycle is likely to give us some surprises and some new things and maybe that will mean we do see kind of crazier prices but bitcoin has this habit of once it starts rolling does not let you get back in and if you never saw it before this is it this is this is how it does man yet six months at 30k people got bored of that price they're expecting lower didn't go lower here we are at an all-time high it's very logical to expect some kind of retracement some kind of move down but man, but man, I, I don't think people, I think the discounts are gone, gone. Time will tell. All right. We've got some other charts to look at, of course. I really just want this inverse head and shoulders to play out. I want a new all-time high the same day that we hit an all-time high of subscribers on our stream. Let's go, fam. Let's go. We're going to look at Solana next, probably. Solana next, because that's what people want to look at. But uh, what do you guys want to look at? Can we check F, of course? The dollar is shooting up. Well, maybe it's going to make me a liar. I'll pull the dollar up. 
what else can we look at today, guys? Or what's on your minds? I don't know. People, I feel like people are intimidated to ask me questions. I would throw me some questions. What can, what do you guys want to know? Yeah, dollars. All right. That's all right. Pretty much what we were looking for. Back to 103.6. This is not looking good. The dollar really does have to move all the way back up here to like 104. If it rejects here, this is a bearish 5.0. And you're looking at a big old head and shoulders. That's it's a, like a critical time. Uh, kind of going back on what we were saying too in the market update. When the dollar shows strength or rallies, we see downside pressure on commodity stocks, crypto. And uh, here we are. March 8th was the low for the dollar. It has moved over the last 11 days up. How well does that line up? Hmm. Not that, not bad though. Actually, take a peek at this. I didn't think of this. Uh, this was, right, the, the 8th? eighth okay right here this is when the dollar hit its lowest point or the dixie hit its lowest point in this local range price is exactly where it was price is, is equal to that day yet the dollar has moved up that could be identified as some kind of divergence i don't know what you would call it but it's a divergence uh showing or suggesting that bitcoin has gained strength even though the price hasn't moved, it has gained strength as the dollar has moved up and Bitcoin largely unaffected. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Wait, I was going to look at Soul next and I was reading. Can you ask a question? Yes, you can, State World. Can we check F piano classes? Yes, we can. Can we check F? You already asked that. You're new, struggling to make a strategy. Any help? L scripting. I, I can tell you the most valuable words you'll ever hear. And that's, if you're new to trading, man, just slow it down. Whatever you're doing, slow it down. And also check out the uh, free trading course that I put out on YouTube. Still publishing. We got more videos in the pipe, but uh, it is amazing. The videos are amazing. But slow it down. You don't need to use leverage, especially when you start. And when you start or when you're struggling, the thing you should focus on first and most importantly, it's not sexy, is risk management. If you are new to trading and you are trading or risking more than 1% of your portfolio on a trade, meaning if that trade goes absolutely the wrong way against you, that you can lose more than 1% of your portfolio, you're doing it wrong. Just facts. Just straight up facts. There's billion dollar pieces of wisdom for you. You want to look up Doge, AVAX, XRP, SHIB, etc. We got Soul pulled up. We do want to look at AVAX because AVAX also being spicy here. 100K, that's right, Smatoshi. That's right, my friend. We did it today while live. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to look at AVAX and Soul. You will do 100 different trades. Good for you. I like it. He's not answering. Uh, I, I answered that person. They never asked a question. Just ask exactly. Let me see who's over here. We got two feeds going. What's up? Amen, Guleria, DM Mining, Janine Cooksey, Kush is your cologne. I like that. Newman Peter, Scottish Crypto, Shaq with the combo, and Stay World over there on the vertical stream. Shout out to you. Shout out to you, fam. Can't stop laughing at Slurf. What the hell is Slurf, dude? What's up, Barry? So many influencers on X are implying that everyone should be getting out of crypto as we may find new lows and enter another bear. Are they saying that? Are they really saying that, guys? That makes me so bullish. If you've uh, tuned in week over week to this channel, you probably are getting sick of, you probably got sick of me saying, I don't like how bullish everyone else is. We streamed through the last cycle, through 2019 into 2020, and we were the only bullish people. We were the only bullish channel in like October, September of 2020. I don't think there was a single other one. This time we have many, many people very bullish and it's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. Kipper is short or long? That's on you, bud. You've been mining Bitcoin since 2019. Dope. 
VZ, should I start taking profits? When do you start taking them, put them in XRP? Go for it, buddy. I personally like to put my profits into BTC. You're 15 and learning SMC and ICT. Any advice, Piano? You're starting early, dude. Just thinking about finance at that age is going to put you so far ahead. Like, worlds ahead, man. Nobody taught me anything about finance ever. I mean, I grew up poor. My family didn't know about finance. But uh, nobody teaches you this stuff. It's good that you're learning this early. Just take it slow. You got a lot of time. Buying and holding assets at that age is your just, just your best friend, dude. By the time you're like, I don't even know, out of college, you'll have so many years. I'm just, I'm jealous, dude. I'm, I'm jealous. Small shark. Does Bybit have starter fees or limits for newcomers? I mean, every exchange has fees. Limits don't really exist in, in crypto the same way they do in stocks. There's no like number of trades you can take in a week. I forget what those rules are called. BS is what they're called. Appreciate you, dude. Do have a lot of links to all kinds of exchanges in the video description. Sign up using my link. You'll get the VIP access in Discord. Uh, make sure you sign up with exchanges you're allowed to use. Please don't. Yeah, please don't sign up with stuff you're not allowed to use. And check out Near when we got a second Kush. Yeah, you probably can. Sitting at a gas station right now. Nice. What point does one stop leverage trading and stay on spot? Honestly, it's, it hurts me to see this, but new people now want to start on leverage and then they get wrecked and then they're like, oh, I probably should just do done spot this whole time. Fortunately for me, when I started, there wasn't leverage. It was just spot. So I did it the other way. If you're new, start with spot, dude. Do not, like if you've never traded before, your first trade should not be on leverage. Anyone who suggests otherwise is full of shit, like straight up just full of it. They don't know what they're talking about. That is not a good way to start trading. If that's the way you started trading and you're doing well, more power to you. But you don't need it. You don't need it. It's hard to say when you should start. Honestly, if you're doing leverage, you've never done spot, start today. There you go. What's up, Chad? The lower the price, the less sellers are willing to let it go. The more buyer, The more buyers are willing to buy cheap. Price can't fall much more. That logic is sound, brother, but that is just not how we have seen. This is not just, this is just not how we've seen these markets move. I like it. I want that to be true. I do. This bull run seems like a lot of people who know nothing about crypto are dumping money into random meme coins. Yep. Waka waka. You, you, if you've watched cycles, you know how that's going to end. Like that never ends well. Never ends well. Not limits like that. Some exchanges have limits for deposits. Uh, if you don't KYC with platforms, you're going to have a withdrawal limit, but typically those withdrawal limits are like five Bitcoin. And then if you want it to be higher, then you just KYC. And then it's usually, I don't know, like a hundred. Speaking of a hundred, we hit a hundred K. Let's go. Ooh, I'm coughing. I'm dying. We hit a hundred K on this live stream. Beautiful. Beautiful shout out Irish eight four four subscribed. <clears throat> My guy. God. You ever get water? You like so you just start coughing on water? I don't know what just happened. That's what just happened to me. I won't die. What's up, uh Zachydra? Howard subscribed. Stark Harris 387TY and Neil Kumar Cuba Estrada. Movies now in all caps. Wakar Sharif. Only blue cards. Bid otter. Tron Nate, some a few people whose names I can't read in different languages. Uh, Muhammad Sharif, Chisos, v, JDV Playground, Rodrigo. Man, there's so many. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Every single one of you, I love you. Just do demo tradings. Tell one, not a bad idea. I mean, paper trading, I would highly recommend. Like, if I can't get you to not leverage trade, try at least paper trading. Like, fake money so you don't lose it. Yvonne, you'll never beat the Irish. It's good to see you, Yvonne. What's up, uh, Ferdas, my guy? He Mule, Tigra, Dan June Cat. Is there like a norm of when to sell your alts after Bitcoin cycle tops? How many waves do people usually wait for? Video Kingdom, uh, it's a cool question. 
I'm trying not to just do a thousand charts today. I know some of you like that, but honestly, it's it's boring. It's boring for me and it's boring for a lot of viewers. So I'm glad we're kind of doing something different. So when to sell your altcoins, right? That is the trick. There is no definitive answer. If it was that easy, I mean, we'd all, you know, we'd all be millionaires or whatever. But uh, here is the best answer to that I can give you. And that is the Bitcoin dominance chart. We don't have a ton of history. Really, we just have last cycle and this cycle. Uh, but this is how I would look at it. Typically, dominance being high. So from August, let's say August 2019 to like April 21. Wow, even in April 21. I didn't realize I dumped at the all-time high. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, typically when dominance is high. And so for the sake of this, I will say it's kind of high right now. I would say like high is like 60, 70 dominance, if it even gets there. Uh, when it's high, alts are cheap. They are relatively cheap against Bitcoin. So that's the opposite. That's when you'd want to enter. So right now it might be suggesting that entering all positions is the move. Right. Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, but when dominance falls, so here, last time we had a significant fall, like May of 21, started, started in like February of 21 down to May. When we hit this low range, low dominance suggests the opposite. It suggests that alts are very highly valued against Bitcoin. Historically, at least for the data we have, this has been a great indicator. I have traded this just like purely this in the past. It doesn't work as well anymore. But the way you can think about it is dominance right now at 53%. If dominance moves up, alts are getting cheaper. And if dominance falls down back to its last year or last cycle lows around like 40%-ish or lower, it was surprising it didn't break its low in the last cycle. This is... Alts are uh, more expensive, we can say, expensive. I'm not even gonna type, I'm not even gonna write out expensive. But uh, as dominance falls, this is going to be the only reliable signal that I have to tell you or can give you. Dominance falling, reaching down to near those last cycle lows or whatever, that is a great signal that it's time to be taking profit, that it's time to at least be slowly wading out of your positions. Right now, it's kind of in the middle, so it is harder to answer. This could really go either way. We're at the bottom of this like eight-year trend line on dominance. It's been very strongly climbing on the month. I like, I love this chart, man. Order block at the top of your previous resistance, engulfed, back tested that previous resistance as support, moved higher. Did the same again on the month, moved higher. Like, and now here we are at the top of this trend. So basically I'm looking for dominance to break up or down. And if it breaks up, I might add to my old positions. And if it breaks down, I'm gonna start looking for those taking profit opportunities. I think there is no perfect answer to your question, but the best one is the trend of Bitcoin dominance. Boom, there we go. That's the best, that's the best way. Avalanche. Yeah, I got soul and avalanche. We'll look at we'll look at them now. I've been uh <clears throat> been in the zone kind of just thinking about hundred K subscribers. We're gonna get our check mark. Uh oh, we're gonna get that plaque. This is five years in the making, guys. What do I think about Caspa? Caspa is legit. I'm still unsure if Caspa had some kind of like pre mining event though. As far as I know, they didn't pre mine, but there's something to do with like early blockchain history that's not there. And it makes me a little suspicious. Makes me a little suspicious. Uh, but I like Casper more than any any other given project. Look at Soul here. Soul last night hit 209. That is the top of the highest monthly candle close for Solana. Last monthly resistance. I haven't been of the opinion that this is going to be a very significant resistance personally. Uh, I think the all-time high is all that stands in Solana's way. <clears throat> Though there is some interesting mechanics, if you saw my tweet about Solana hitting an all-time high in market cap, but not in price. Solana's supply has inflated quite a bit since 2021. More than it's supposed to. They state it's like an 8% inflation, but it seems that the, there's been more, I guess with token unlocks and things. 
That does change the way I view this chart a little bit. It makes me think that 267, the all-time high, is going to be more of a resistance than I expected. And this chart looks great. It does look great. Sigh all the way up there. Lux Algo still looking looking for the uptrend. <clears throat> I feel like there's something I'm missing. I don't think there is. You're at the final monthly resistance. The all-time high, 267. Just seems like it's going to 267, doesn't it? Trading view taking forever to load today. All right, all right. Four hour looks good. Starting to paint bear div on low time frames, but you're always you just literally always have bear div on on low time frames in the bull market. No idea why. Just seems to be the way it does. That touch, man. That touch to like two oh nine is so perfect. Mm -hmm. Extremely low time frames. One hundred and ninety eight. One hundred ninety eight. You could start seeing this pain out. If Solana fails to break to a higher high before breaking below 198, we may see a higher time frame retracement. It would look something like this, probably. I'm not really worried about that, though. I don't really think that's going to bring us anywhere. Let's see. 12 hour. Water block in the day at 185. Man, this is a flying knife, dude. This thing has been so bully. Honestly, I I don't see like necessarily an indicator or something or that would suggest this. But just looking at price action here, I think it's very likely that Solana will see another one of these. Like at, I guess I, I don't want to say at worst, but I think it will have another period of cooling off below the all-time high. Maybe forming some kind of cup like it did back here. I don't think it's going to go straight up from here past 267. Personally, if it does break the all time high, our moon math does give us some very juicy targets. Very juicy targets. Man, this thing is like, it's exciting, but it's boring to TA. Like, it's just been moving up. It had some really cool stuff painted back here at the last kind of uh, called accumulation phase, right at the end of December of last year into uh, late February. This was really cool. But since then, it has not been very uh, good for the charting. Like it's just moving up to the left, up to the right. Maybe this will give me an idea. No. No. Hmm. Let's look at AVAX, because AVAX I haven't looked at in a while, and AVAX has been making some serial moves. Serial, serial moves. Beautiful. I wonder the last time I looked at this chart. AVAX right up to 64.50. Very good. Very good. However, those thinking about FOMOing in today, I would take a moment and think about that again. My advice is always if you're feeling FOMO or panic, disconnect yourself from the chart for a little bit. Go take a walk, play with a dog, high five a stranger. Um, play dance dance revolution whatever it is get your mind off of it and then come back and if you feel the same way then make that decision but don't make that decision in the moment here you are though here you are painted a nice bullish order block on the month you closed a bullish engulfing candle on that order block and you moved up to the next resistance this is the real point of efficiency on the AVAX chart if we zoom this a little bit right here I'm going to get rid of that. This is the point of efficiency. I'll make this actually a square because I think that'll be better. Right here. What makes it efficient is the market moved up and down, trapping buyers and sellers, creating resistance. Once it dropped below uh, 6450, it fell rather inefficiently all the way down to $14, where it then began painting very efficient bear market bottom. It broke it. 
Now it's moved to its point of efficiency, 6450. It could move as high as 9750 and still be in this range. But this is, this is the resistance, honestly. If we see Bitcoin and the rest of the market roll over at the end of this month, I think there could be a nice play on AVAX back at $38. I would rather wait for $38.50 than enter right here directly at resistance, especially with leverage. But in all fairness, we have seen many charts do exactly this. I have to always say my, my unsexy, responsible talk. Uh, we've seen charts do exactly this, move up to these efficiencies, and then just blast through them. We have. We've seen a lot. I just think it's always a bad bet. I think there's always a better bet to be made. If you didn't have AVAX, and now you want AVAX because it doubled in, I don't know, the last like week or two, you're really just buying it because of FOMO. There's, there can't really be another reason, right? For the most impatient people out there, at least 50. Like at minimum, I'd wait for 50, right? Maybe you can catch this kind of move. Previous resistance, untested, would be a beautiful entry. 97. I think if it can get above $100, it's, it moves to its all-time high, which is surprisingly at 147. I thought it would be lower. 147, that's about a 50% move from that $100 mark. Hmm. That means it has more than 100% move back to the all-time high. 130. That is hella spicy. Whether AVAX does it this month or next month or, the, I don't know, May, I think it will trade to 97 or or $100 in this cycle. Realistically, retesting its all-time high is very likely just for anything in a bull cycle, bull market. Um... If it does break 147 or 150, using our Fibonacci extension tool, we do get a moon target of $831 for AVAX. Let's see if that's right. Yep, that's still right. Still right. However, that number is not in play until you break 147, the previous all-time high. This is a sketchy point, man. It's a sketchy point. I also wouldn't go short here. I would not go short on this. A lot of the bull market guys, as unfun as it sounds, is, is going to be waiting. It's going to be waiting. Just making it through the boring parts. Not selling out of your positions. I bet a lot of people who had AVAX from here on this, what, multiple month sideways range at $40. I bet lots of people saw this trading sideways for weeks, saw like Pepe and whatever soul mooning sold their avax because it wasn't moving bought in at like the top of these other coins and now those other coins are just moving sideways and now they're seeing their avax move up so they're probably gonna rebuy it you know get out of that losing position get back in it now they're getting back in right at resistance it's a dangerous game doing nothing will be the most profitable efficient use of your energy in the bull market it's doing nothing my guy, Jason Casper. We're going to look at my, my wreck death trade from last stream. My guy. Right here. Right here, brother. Right here. The big hunsky. The big 100K. Cheers to you. You guys should subscribe to Jason Casper if you're not subscribed to him. Man's a Chad. Does very similar content. He's a trader, live streamer. He has 114 or 117,000 subscribers, so he's 17,000 ahead of us, but we're catching up. I love you, bro. Love it. Love the love, dude. Let me see. I bet I missed Super Chats. I just so happened to look in when you sent that, which is very lucky. <laughs> very, very lucky. Let me see. Ooh, bear. New membership. Nice, nice. Coins chick. Oh, wow. We got a lot of them. My bad, fam. ID all the way back at the beginning of the stream asked for Doge. Still haven't gotten to it, but I haven't forgotten. Curtis Neal. Congrats on 100K. You deserve it. Thank you, fam. Thank you. Ultra Chaos Steve. I already got that one. I didn't miss that one. Chris Pax. I got that one. Kai. I got that one. Josh. I got that one. Coins chick. Congrats on 100K. Congrats indeed. Thank you, Coins chick, for being part of this community. You the best. 
Actually, I don't think I missed that much. I don't think I missed that much. Jason Casper with the huge dono. Love you, brother. We're, we're both heading to 200K this year. Let's go. Let's go. FOMC today? No. FOMC is on Wednesday. The stream is scheduled. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. Only in Ohio. What's in Ohio? Spread them. Spread them. What's up, Amori? Empty 037 LT. Moggy's over there. Ro Ro Crypto. Singha. <coughs> Singha. Spread them and XRP BTC. You know what? That reminds me. I told someone we would look at Soul BTC today, and then I forgot. Then I just forgot. We'll look at that quick. By the way, Piggle, you don't even have to like timestamp anymore. We got the beginning. One hundred. We got the intro. Fire! 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 I'm gonna do that back. I don't. Do you have it announce yours, Jason? If you do, I'm gonna do that back to you in your live. Soul BTC. A chart I admit I have not paid that much attention to. Let's take a peek. Soul is approaching its yearly resistance. It's currently at zero zero two nine seven zero zero. Three six seven, the yearly. Let's see here. That could suggest that if Bitcoin does not change price at all, Sol could move twenty three percent to resistance. Twenty three percent gain if Bitcoin doesn't move at all, back to its yearly resistance. Or it could imply that Bitcoin moves up, Sol moves up. There's lots of combinations. Bitcoin moves down, Sol doesn't move at all. I do like this on the month. It has broken monthly highs there for the year. So we can get our FIB tool out. Our 1618 sits very, very closely to that monthly resistance. The all-time high. Exactly, man. That's confluence. One thing I love about the Bitcoin pairs for charts is the TA works infinitely better. Infinitely better than dollar pairs. Dollar pairs, TA is like sometimes a crapshoot. Bitcoin pairs, they hit. Like they hit, they actually play out the way you kind of think all charts should. Highly recommend you look into them. Because Sol broke its uh, December high, which is also what its yearly high last year. Broke its December high at zero zero two eight nine. Price is very close to there. Definitely want to see March settle up above. If it does, and even possibly in this month. I could see Bitcoin or uh, Sol BTC testing its yearly resistance. Back to its all-time high, 50-60%. How far is Sol USD back to its all-time high? 30%. Hmm. Hmm. Not what I expected. Beautiful weekly close last week. Does look like it's hanging out on top of that previous resistance. I think that's a pretty good bet. I think this is a pretty good bet at least. Not a huge move, but I do see some more upside on there. Probably probably would be aware of a wick. At least some kind of trading. Back down to that previous weekly resistance. You can get a nice risk to reward there. That's not bad. And just for funsies, here's a bonus chart. This is the eth, Sol Eth Flippening chart. It has broken its all-time high, which is rather spicy. Rather spicy. Using our FIB tool, our 1618 sits at 0.5. Half the way to the flippening. The measured move at the flippening. Pretty spicy stuff. Does that really mean anything else? No, not really. Just spicy stuff. Soul does continue to gain on Ethereum, and it does look like it does look like it wants to head to that 0.5 zone, which is about a double, a 2x against Ethereum. Pretty cool stuff. Here's what I was talking about earlier. Last thing about Soul. Soul's above its all-time high in market cap, but not in price, and that is because the supply of Soul since the previous all-time high has increased, and it should mathematically have increased proportionately to how far from the high it is, right? Is that math right? I think last stream when I tried to do this, I did it backwards. 26% from the high. So if market cap's at all-time high roughly, there should be about one-fourth more sold than there was at the last all-time high. Oof. That's a lot. 
That is a lot. I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie. Please, you're subbed. That's cool, Joe Fries noobs. The meat. Yeah, see you, buddy. What a... I, I'm flattered. I'm flattered, Joe. It, is, it ain't that kind of show, brother. Can't wait for Eth not to be a thing anymore. <laughs> I think Eth is always going to be a thing. I don't think it's going anywhere. That's kind of the, the thing about um, blockchains, man. It's kind of their jam. They're very difficult to kill, if like ever possible. Ethereum definitely retreating from that high. Yikes. Not the end of the world. This is 14%. Really just looking for 3,300 USD to hold on FUSD. This is that efficiency we had on the chart. F blasted through. I know a lot of you are hoping AVAX does the same here. The exact same thing. Made a move up. I'm blown away though. I can't believe it hasn't hit 4,600. I can't believe it hasn't retested the all-time high. I don't really believe it won't. I, there's just like nothing in my opinion in the way. I think it's just taking a breather. Taking a little breathe ski. I placed this uh this long, I think it was during the last live stream. Pretty sure. Riggedy wrecked came for us hard. Life happens. We had the right idea. We were patient. We waited for it to come to us. It just fell a little harder. Targeting that daily order block. Honestly though, now that it's down there. I don't really know where the next trade would be. Kind of hands off for me. I would rather take a trade above 4,000 at this point than try to catch it. Hell, the bottom could be in for that locally, but I just don't know where you would find confirmation for it. Like, what, what would say that's the bottom? Not a lot. Not a lot. Right at our stop. Oh, man. If you get a bounce right here at our stop, three four seven one you're probably going back up for retracement keep an eye on that bitcoin being boring but that's okay we got a hundred thousand subscribers today nothing can get in our way i didn't know how long it would take we almost hit 100k before the stream started and i was like stop subscribing people <laughs> i was like i stop it i don't want to hit this before i want it to be live we did it we did it and we did it with style we got a lot of viewers let's go let's go keep smashing those like buttons and just because we're at 100k does not mean that you should stop subscribing definitely join our fam definitely join the discord discord.gg slash tom crown it's free and if you've signed up with any of our links you'll get vip access to our exclusive trading rooms and ideas do i think ada will reach a new all-time high i do I think it will at least retest its all-time high. At least. The Cardana. Yeah. Beautiful. I think ADA is in great condition. I know it's moving slow, but it closed last month beautifully. This month, it's already come back to back test that previous resistance at like 60 cents. As long as it closes above 59.5, I just don't. It's almost like Ethereum at this point. It's like I was saying, I don't know why Ethereum wouldn't move back to its all time high. Now, ADA, I'm not necessarily saying that about ADA because this is a little different right now. ADA does have some points of efficiency in its chart, and it's roughly at a dollar. That's why I'm still looking for a dollar. It would blow my mind if this bull run ended and 88 didn't hit a dollar. Ethereum doesn't have that efficiency above it. That's why I'm blown away that it didn't just move to the all-time high. Probably Bitcoin put a little brakes on it. Like right there is a dollar for ADA. Nothing above it. ADA is down here though. Um, as long as it doesn't close below 59.5, ADA is going to a dollar. What it does there, I don't know. Maybe you get a back test at that 60 cents and then you move up. But if it can get through that efficiency, ADA is just clear skies, man. Clear skies. Look at this. All the way up to 280. Just down. A little bit of efficiency. Just down. Painted your bear market bottom. 
broke, painted support, an order block above previous resistance. Like this chart is fundamentally beautiful. It's like absolutely beautiful. I'm still waiting for that dollar mark to hit. Let's see what the daily looks like. Getting triggity trashed, I guess, on these, uh, these longs. Although I find that very hard to believe that that's how I place that. If it's a 1.5 to 1, I don't place 1.5 to 1s. Weird. That's okay. Uh, really just looks like what, it, what it's been doing. If ADA does trade again, here's like further confirmation of that. If it trades below 59.5, which is uh, that monthly level, but also our March 4th wick low, then this chart gets more bearish. As long as it holds that low, I'm good. That's a strong low. I think ADA is still moving to a dollar. It might not happen this month. I originally thought it would happen this month, but it might not this month. Getting a phone call. Perhaps accidentally. Moggy, are you calling me? Why are you calling me? Is something wrong? Happy Ramadan? Is it Ramadan? Happy Ramadan. Gina. It's Gina. It's Gina. What's up, Brutal? What's up, Fuza? Who else? Who else is here to celebrate? El Mascari. Got Bless in the house. Brutal. Chad Haynes. Crossfade Crypto. Crypto Capone. Dave Digital. Does it matter to you? Eddie. Derek Merrill. There he is on Facebook and on YouTube. This man's double timing. Double time. Uh, Fuza, Gabrielle Smithson, Gim Gomio, JC, Japernicus, Kato, Khan Kaka. <laughs> nice name. Larry Calabrese, Lars, Moggy, Nate Bender. Nate Bender. I used to know someone named Nate Bender. Actually, it was Nick Bender, I think. Plan E, Sean, Rhino, Oligany, Sergio, Shring Tech, Softshell, Pickle, The Video Kingdom, Three Parts, Todd Stadler, Trader JX, TWA, Voluntary Bits, Yannick, Monkey, we got more, Danny Carney, Abjit, Jadhav, MT037, Nix Nix, Philip J. Fry, favorite Futurama character, and so many more. Everyone's here to celebrate us beating Bitcoin to 100K. It was a hell of a race, guys. Hell of a race. For a long time, I didn't think we were going to win. In 2021, I didn't think we were going to win. But we pulled ahead. Because we have the best community in crypto right here. Stream in daily. Mm, love it. What's up, Wilton? Top Lel, Evidence, Rawat, Niraj, Martin, Shane, Arsum, Tape Lab Co., Fami, all these people subscribing. I love it. Keep the energy up. Keep it moving. Bitcoin, not looking so hot here. Not looking the best. <coughs> Getting a little droopy. Not the end of the world. Remember, this was placed to show you guys the concept of the validation, invalidation of this inverse head and shoulders potential. It's not wrecked, but man, it's not looking the best, is it? Not looking the best. Still in play until under 64.5. We went over that in depth earlier. Bitcoin really making it not a hype stream for us, but that, it's probably just being a little jealous. You know, Bitcoin wishes it was at 100K, but it's not. It's not. Mobile stream fire. That's right, brother. That's right, boosted. Love G. Make sure you smash them likes over there on the on the mobile version. Someone was asking about Doge and their entry, and that was a while ago. Not a bad entry, brother. Literally, if you'd watch this channel, we were looking for 12.7 to 13.7 cents as an entry. Did that fill? I think it did. I think it did. Let's look. Yep. Yep. That's a fill. That's a good trade. I mean, that's just a good trade. No matter how good a trade is, it can still not work out. But that's just a fire trade, man. I kind of thought Doge would move to this level later, maybe next month, as you can see by these really spaced out arrows. But uh, that's fire. Definitely want to see it close today up. Do not want to see it close below 12.7. 12.7, likely a signal. Doge is looking for 10 cents. It did hit its big baddie resistance up here, 20 to 25 cents. This is it, though. 
the good news for people who have been holding Doge for years now. <laughs> the good news is this. Yes, you rejected from 20 cents. That's not ideal. Hopefully you can find support here like we've been kind of projecting out. That would be an amazing bounce. Even if you don't, it's not the end of the world. You still got 10 cents in play. You have very strong support down here at like six to, to eight cents. I don't think that gets tested in the short term. The good news is 20 to 25 cents is it. If Doge can trade above and close above 25 cents, preferably on the monthly, I believe it's heading right back to all-time highs, 75 cents. Probably breaking all-time highs. 25 cents is going to be a battle, though. This is where I want to say the majority of people got trapped in positions. The majority of people getting trapped into the bear market on Doge over the period of like eight months getting trapped right there, 25 to 20 cents. And that's going to be, that's going to be a real resistance. It might take some time to break through it. I think that's an excellent entry. Whoever, whoever did that long, man, I think you have an excellent entry. Depends how, if you're, like, what leverage you have, what risk you're taking, but like, that's pretty good, man. Bravo. I got the feeling you didn't watch this channel either to get it. More power to you. Beautiful. Coming off that 200% banger, looking for another 100% banger up to 27 cents on that. It's coming. It's coming. See how it holds there. Bitcoin, you giant biznatch. Don't you go down. Don't you do it. Don't do it. You're supposed to paint this pattern. It's supposed to be pretty and you're supposed to go up. One thing uh, that we noted on Friday that I'll bring up again, and it is unfortunately bearish. It's not bullish. I was talking about how over the weekend, people were asking, oh, will we get a sell-off on the weekend? Yeah, whatever. Um, and I said, what we've seen in the past is we really haven't seen a sell-off over the weekend for a while and uh, virtually none of any significance. We have seen rallies on Sunday and into Monday morning open trading time, 9.30 East or whatever, every single weekend. We didn't really get it this weekend. It's not the end of the world. We have levels. We have supports that definitely can hold. But it's worth noting, Bitcoin did not see what we have seen virtually every other Sunday, Monday for the last few months where we got kind of like a the move started on Sunday, like over into midnight and then into Monday morning, it popped off and then cooled off kind of during traditional market hours. We didn't get that. So I'm being alert. I'm being vigilant. I'm watching paying more attention now we didn't get it sunday was not a red day it was almost five percent but that was after a six percent let's see a two and a half two and a half six percent three day streak something to keep an eye on it's not the best not the best at the moment we're still fine this rounding top's not bad I really do think this plays out as an inverse head and shoulders, though. I do. It is 1 p.m. I started streaming at 11.45. We broke 100,000. We have mad great viewership. People are subscribing left and right. They're joining the Discord, discord.gg slash tomcrown. They're signing up with links in the video description. Sign up with any of our partners in the video description. Join the Discord and you'll get access to our VIP exclusive trading rooms with all of my trade ideas. Lots of talented traders in there. It's free, so join it. It's worth it. Do it. We got sure pow on Wednesday. We hit 100K today, fam. I love you guys. Love you guys. Hell of a day. I think for once, I'm going to treat myself. Should I treat myself? I'm going to treat myself for once. We're going to end it early. I love you guys. Jump in the Discord. Sign up with the links in the video description below. Specifically, shout out to Lux Algo, our sponsor, the number one indicator and scanner company in the world. Hell yeah, guys. 100K and change. We did it. I love you. Be, be good. Be in the Discord. I'll be chatting there. Crown out.